digital e-cash that's going to allow you to send money from one person to another person without knowing who that person is going to be and that means that you know criminals are going to have access to this but in you know in general it should make life better for everyone so i take that approach this week on monero talk is sponsored by cake wallet store send receive and exchange your monero and bitcoin safely on ios and android too cake wallet is open source and you always control your own keys Cake Wallet is trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever by typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. Douglas Tuman has a friendly chat with Michael Ruiz, an old school Bitcoiner who has become fed up with the lack of enthusiasm in the Bitcoin community around making Bitcoin more private. Monero Talk starts now. All right, Michael. What's up, Douglas? How are you? So I heard, I heard you sold all your Bitcoin and you're, you're all Monero now. Oh this, my this, this. God, right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just had to, I just had to. <laughs> What's going on, man? Um, I've been... Uh, like reading every every other one of your tweets, I don't know. I don't know how you got in my in my thread, uh, but I like what you're saying. I think it's I think it's good stuff. Um, I we we spoke, I guess, in the Twitter Spaces. That that was cool. Um, but I wanted to have you on mostly because I like the way you're you're talking about Bitcoin right now, and you're you're bringing things up that I think need to be brought up. And I guess others are bringing it up too. But I think you're doing it in a very effective way. Uh, so I'm curious to talk to you about that. I want to know, I guess, first off, how long have you been in crypto? Cause it, it's, it seems like you, you really kind of know what you're talking about. It seems like you're, you're barking up the right tree. <laughs> um, have you been in it for a long time or? So, yeah, I mean, originally the way I got involved with, uh, Bitcoin is, I mean, it all started with understanding the monetary system. And I mean, that goes way back to like. Uh, G. Edward Gw- Griffin and like the creature from Jericho Island and learning about the Fed. Um, Peter Schiff was a big mentor, um, just listening to him and reading his stuff, um, ironically. And mm-hmm. then getting into uh, getting more into it with Ron Paul and learning about the Fed, became involved in like his campaign as well as like protesting against the Federal Reserve, actually going there and marching around and stuff like that with picket signs. Uh, and then just continuing down the Austrian path, learning about gold and silver and like monetary principles and stuff of that nature, kind of getting into some of Rothbart and, um, you know, uh, Mises and stuff like that. Uh, not too heavily because I wasn't like an avid reader back then, but like conceptually, I could understand kind of what they were what they were getting at. And that's just a natural evolution into Bitcoin, right? And like, as soon as I find out about Bitcoin, um, luckily I wasn't, um, I wasn't held like, you know, anchored down in my, in my thinking, it, like, at least I wasn't do- dogmatic. I immediately like looked at Bitcoin as a possible solution to a lot of the problems that we have with our monetary system. So like the fiat monetary system, um, I really concluded quickly that it is at the base of a lot of our problems. They stem from centrally controlled and um, centrally administered capital. And, you know, when you have the control of the money supply, well, there's a lot that you can do. There's a lot of control that you have over society. So, um, yeah, I saw Bitcoin as a potential solution, as a way to practice agorism, um, as a way to, you know, start, to exit the fiat system. And um, so that was pretty, that was probably 2012, 2013. And I've been kind of just following it and commenting here and there um, and uh, kind of staying on the per- <laughs> the edges of the space, not getting too involved until recently. Like recently, I think I've like been a little bit more vocal and that's kind of put me in the center of some kind of uh, some discussions and I'm happy to do it. Happy to be here. Happy to talk about it. It's really interesting. I mean, 
we couldn't be in more interesting times. It's like, you know, there's like this revolution brewing on our hands and it's like a peaceful one. And it's, and it's at the base and the core of reality, right. Of, of how our civilization functions. And that's, you know, with the money. And so we get to see it. It's an amazing, amazing time to be alive. Amazing time to be a part of all of this. So, uh, around 20 that was 2012 2013 so are you surprised about kind of where we are with regards to crypto since then or are are you shocked by anything did, did it play out as you expected it to thus far do you think yeah. you would have been further along not as far along at this point yeah so um let's see i wouldn't say i'm i'm shocked by where we are um it's been an interesting journey observing all of it you know like in 2014 i kind of uh wrote about wrote about this stuff i uh, the article is still somewhere up on the internet somewhere um but i basically predicted a lot of what's happening i predicted that you know central banks would continue to print and eventually what's going to end up happening is that people are like the race to debase the currency is going to lead to the race to escape and right there with bitcoin with its hands wide open is saying come to me you know and people would just kind of flow into bitcoin as a natural um process when they're trying to you know escape uh currency devaluation um but and then i also predicted kind of like the rise of um not that i predicted but you know i just kind of thought that hey we're gonna see because all coins were around back then and i was like we're gonna see a proliferation of all these altcoins uh coming to fruition and people are going to be experimenting and there's gonna be all types of crazy ideas that occur and so you know i didn't ha i didn't like know exactly how it was going to progress i mean we had that crazy like altcoin bubble in 2017 and mm -hmm. um we had the block size wars and uh, you know, we had the Segwit 2X and then we had Bitcoin Cash. So all of these have been interesting observations, like interesting to observe. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm surprised that let's just say the only thing I'm surprised at is that about is that the government or the powers that be, whatever they are, you know, the different uh, forces out there who have an interest in maintaining um, the control of the money haven't caught on yet. And it's only now that we're starting to see them come about and kind of rear their head and be like, hey, what's this Bitcoin thing? You know, we need, mm -hmm. to, we need to regulate it. We need to control it. So I would say um, that's pretty much the biggest surprise is that it has yet, it's only now that this kind of, honeymoon phase is ending and now we're kind of going into a different chapter right right it's like why did they let it go for this long right sure sure um yeah i mean that, that i i often wonder that too i ran for congress here in new york like 2020 yeah right they brought it up on the on the spaces and for me well, I was, brought it. what's that so you ran for you ran for congress in new york yep oh, yeah cool. in 2020 um ny04 district the fourth congressional district i ran on the republican line mm -hmm. uh but it was primarily for the purpose of crypto for monero really i kind of saw the writing on the wall like all right they're gonna you know they're gonna start trying to take action against it and for me what you know the the real motivate motive motivational factor was that I didn't really see anybody in Congress kind of making the philosophical argument as to why we need digital cash or why we should allow digital cash to flourish. Mm -hmm. I always saw, cause you know, it was brought up, you know, or in, even in like, I don't know, as early as maybe 2013 there, you know, there were, there were discussions of it on, on the floor. Right. And then it was always, but the, it was always it would always come back to well don't worry about it bitcoin is is a traceable ledger actually so um if anything we could fight crime in, in new ways ways that we were never able to, to fight it before uh so we don't have to worry about bitcoin being used for nefarious purposes because it actually can be used uh you know as a tool to fight crime um and that always bothered me uh that at those moments you know, the discussion wasn't had about, all right, 
do we even want do we want digital cash like all right so yeah bitcoin arguably traceable um but i'll vote for something else like monero or if bitcoin becomes somehow becomes untraceable is that still okay do we want that or is that is that then bad mm -hmm. and so like we really have yet to hear that get debated uh you know in in, in, like, in, uh, in the halls of government right especially yeah. here in this country right i kind of you know like i haven't i haven't seen it yet um i've seen crypto get criticized you know even recently right with the potentially avoid being used to avoid russian sanctions right senator warren put up put up that bill uh you know being used for ransomware but once again the it doesn't come down to okay it's not a measurement of yes it could be used for these bad things versus what are all the good things that come with free speech money and why we might want free speech money rather it's it can be used for all these bad things but we really don't have to worry about it because ultimately we could track and trace it um yeah what's 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 your take on that yeah i mean i don't i don't know i don't know what uh so there was just this chain analysis guy i think his name is jonathan and he was testifying in front of uh i don't know if it was congress or or yeah you know, it was the senate committee that i recently met yeah yeah and so he just echoed exactly what you said you know hey you know bitcoin is actually really traceable and it uh and we have sophisticated software that allows us to determine whether uh you know uh money was used in illicit activity and we can trace that money through the system and you know it's actually you know if they use it incorrectly it's actually easy very easy to trace these uh these criminals so you know that's and i guess what Elizabeth Warren was trying to get at is like, hey, is there ways for them to anon anonym anonymize themselves and kind of route around controls? And, you know, Jonathan was saying, no, there isn't. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's interesting to me because the whole point of Bitcoin is to evade these controls. Like, exactly. otherwise, what is the point? Like, right we might as well just have a much more efficient you know uh digital currency that's controlled by the state right like if they can use it in order to track and trace us and control our behavior um that's i think a huge problem uh, right it's a huge problem for economic activity um and it's a huge problem for fungibility for like the print like the actual principles of money and so yeah it's something that i've been diving down the rabbit hole trying to figure out and explore it all started with the trucker protest right mm -hmm. um because here's here's the thing what you will hear is bitcoin being touted as freedom money as censorship resistant freedom money that is going to allow economic activity to flourish unencumbered by the state I mean, that's basically, I think, the general message that comes across from a lot of, uh, you know, narratives that are put out there, um, at least to the people, right? Like, that's one of its value propositions that's being being promoted. Um, but with the trucker protest, we didn't see that. We saw that there's still a long way to go for Bitcoin to be used, like, peer-to-peer -peer in the way that it was intended. Um, part of that being that it went through a central, like, it went through an intermediary, right? Like the money was crowdfunded into like one account. It wasn't given directly to the truckers, like from peer to peer, like, hey, this is this trucker. He needs this donation. Send him that money, right? Mm -hmm. Part of it is just the process of getting onboarding people and <clears throat> helping them understand uh, how to use Bitcoin. Um, the other thing we saw is that when they got the money, right, they still have to go through, uh, they still have to go through a process to convert it into fiat in order to actually transact um, with the economy, right? So they have to go through a KYC process. And when you're going through all of that and you're dealing with a hostile nation state, I mean, Canada has basically gone on full totalitarian communist, right? So now we get to see how Bitcoin functions in an adversarial environment. Mm -hmm. And we also get to see a lot of its shortcomings and a lot of its vulnerabilities. And that's where I actually became interested. Like before, 
all of this, I was just kind of like, again, on the peripheral, just kind of paying attention to Bitcoin here and there. Like my focus was more so on like our descent into totalitarianism and what the governments are doing uh, regarding coronavirus and all that stuff. But when I saw the truck protest, I said, hey, there's there's somewhere there's a disconnection here, right? Like we're, we're getting this narrative that Bitcoin is this, you know, censorship resistant money and that it's going to facilitate freedom. But yet in the trucker protest, not only did were they able to see some of the Bitcoin, right? But, you know, if enough effort is put in there, they could probably identify a lot of the people who donated and they can probably identify um, um, the the truckers as well if they go through a KYC process. Mm -hmm. So like, let's discuss, let's figure out what's actually happening here so we can like, we can make Bitcoin better. And so we can actually harness it as an like its use case like actually tap into the full potential of it as money as censorship resistant money that will facilitate freedom so that's how i got involved with these discussions and uh yeah so although we don't hear it being discussed in the manner that you have i my hope is that it will it will start to be discussed that way in the halls of congress mm -hmm. or in 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 the bitcoin meetups or at the conferences because i think that's its sole purpose so i had this guy brian solston mm -hmm. Do, have you seen him the, the guy that's running for u.s senate no is it i think it's brian yes yeah, yeah brian Solston. i just had him on, on the show he's running for u.s senate in the state of washington he recently came out he like you know his tweet was uh, I'm running for U.S. Senate. I'm a, I'm a big Bitcoin guy. I'm running primarily to make Bitcoin uh, legal tender in the U.S. And so very cool. And I had him on the show and we spoke. But yeah, once again, like, you know, I, I pushed him on, on it, too. I was like, so, you know, if if the debate comes up and it's like, you know, uh, should should we ban Bitcoin? Uh, you know, what are you going to say? Obviously, is against that. And I said, well, what, what are you going to say if they want to, you know, keep Bitcoin, not, you know, not touch Bitcoin or mess with it, but they want to ban Monero. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I was surprised. He was he was like, you know, obviously he uh, he he said, yeah, not obviously, but I was happy that he did say, yeah, no, he would he would he would stand against that. Right. So he, he mm -hmm. wouldn't be for that. So I do think that, like you said, that conversation is going to happen soon. And that really is the, the conversation that we need to hear. That's what it's all about. That's like like literally where the battle line is, is drawn, right? Mm -hmm. And what, what what do you think, man? What's your take? Do you think, I guess, in in especially in this country, do you think we get to the point where they try to ban something like Monero and then maybe put in some regulations on place for Bitcoin so that it really can't be used privately? I mean, what's your, your current feel with that? yeah um i mean it's, it's hard to say um so i think that we're trending towards more totalitarian controls and measures but ultimately it's up to the people of the united states on whether they comply with you know the dictates of the federal government right we've seen before uh with different things like weed and just overall different areas of of you know society states and municipalities and um even um counties stand up and say hey we're not gonna we're not gonna enforce that we're not even gonna recognize that as being valid right and so i think that you know if there's enough resistance at the local level um that you it, it can be successful in pushing back against some of these heavy-handed authoritarian um regulations that are going to try to be you know that they're going to try to push down you know the pike um i do see a need for people to advocate for bitcoin and for monero and for whatever you know like i'm a freedom maximalist here and i, I believe that we're all adults and we can make our own decision as far as you know what, what we want to participate in and whatnot as long as it's just kind of like you respect people's property rights and you respect um you know, you don't violate uh, like the non-aggression principle and more of a like a I take more of a principled stance than like 
what the government says is right and we should do what they say. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So I think that we're going to need people in all layers of government advocating for the free use of cryptocurrency and, uh, you know, whether that be Monero or whether that be Bitcoin. Now, I personally think they're going to try everything they can to stop people from evading their controls. And that would that would mean going after, obviously, you want to go after the privacy coins, right? Off, like, you know, that's an easy target, easy to sell. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, it's it's used by criminals and, you know, whatever. They can just make anything up. You know, they just make any a narrative up at this point and they just attach all these, you know, these these words to it and to make it real spooky and scary and they just push whenever they can right and they like really taking advantage of crises so whenever a crisis arises i'm sure they're going to try to push for whatever they can um so yeah i i do kind of see that i see a battle with the a regulatory battle coming for every uh you know for for all cryptocurrencies in general, you know, and uh, probably Bitcoin is going to be on their target and they're probably going to try to co-opt that. And like the smaller ones are going to try to uh, to ban altogether. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, but you can already see it from the testimonies and from the teeth are already coming out like <laughs> they're, they're getting they're They're wanting to to to, um, to go ahead and like push whatever they can. And they're trying all types of sneaky ways to do so. Yeah, I agree. So I guess my, my next question then is, what do you think happens if they do try to ban things like Monero, right? Mm -hmm. But then they kind of pretty much embrace Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. um, how do you think that then plays out? Most, you know, particularly like with the crypto community, like with Bitcoiners and stuff, like what happens then are like, our Bitcoiner, are most of them are then cool with it. And then like, you know, uh, the Bitcoin rallies, like, uh, you know, number go up, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about it. It's not getting regulated. Um, is there like, does the community kind of split? And then you have people, maybe that being the moment when their eyes open and they're like, they become, start supporting uh, projects like Monero. Hmm. Well, how do you think that potentially plays out so um yeah i mean bitcoin is filled with status right now like and you're gonna have a large portion of the community just advocating for uh regulation and they probably see to some extent monero as competition and so it's like you know you're just gonna have that natural tendency like oh yeah get rid of them they're shit coins and stuff like that we've already seen that rhetoric come out so right. i don't think that's right right like me personally i don't like own any monero i'm not i don't right now at this moment don't have any interest in monero um but i think that it should exist i think that the people who are into monero like from what i can see they really care about like fungibility and they really care about privacy and they really care about a person's ability to transact in the in an economy anonymous anonymously so they don't fall victim to the state and like those are like we should be i recognize that and that's important and i wish that type of culture and that type of atmosphere like bitcoin would embrace it more because what i see is like look at me i'm on a monero pro podcast right now why am i on a monero podcast talking about privacy why am i not, not like why didn't i get invited on a bitcoin po uh, podcast to talk about privacy talk about anonymity to talk about fungibility and why isn't it being discussed more why isn't it part of the culture more i don't know right it should be it should be right if we're trying to actually have censorship resistant money here like it needs to be part of the conversation and the idea that regulations can help bitcoin at all like achieve like success to me is is like is doesn't make any sense whatsoever right like bitcoin is either good as it is as a system and therefore we should leave it alone and we shouldn't touch it and we should right or like you know bitcoin is not in that case then what's the point right like what's the point of having a regulated bitcoin if if like we like again i'm just going to reiterate that we should just have something more efficient we don't need like all these machines and all of that if if the 
if it can be controlled and regulated anyways the point is to evade the controls and to allow people to operate in a black market setting like that's the point of bitcoin so uh whether it will actually allow that to happen and that faci to facilitate i don't know i'm like i said i'm going down the rabbit hole now um i actually we might <laughs> we might want to do a podcast after i've gone down the rabbit hole because it's been a fun process learning about all of this stuff fungibility and privacy and all of that and i'm i'm just going through the process now but i recognize the need right like you don't need to be uh you don't need to uh have technical knowledge or just like understand what's coming down the pike as far as solutions to understand that there's a problem right there's obviously a problem with bitcoin's fungibility on the layer one right now will lightning fix this i don't know will will like other uh bitcoin improvement um proposals fix it i don't know um so we'll see um but I, I hope that like the Bitcoin community will recognize, hey, if you give the state that power to uh, ban Monero, that will eventually be used to come after components of Bitcoin, right? Especially if it's being used in a way that the state doesn't want it to be used. So I would hope that the Bitcoin community would rally around that and resist all legislation against all cryptocurrencies coming down. But I, I, I don't think that's happening. I think there's a lot of status in Bitcoin. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Status and people that are just, and I guess they are status that are, you know, fiat hungry, right? So they see the number go up in fiat value. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, so, th and that's well, kind of, that's kind of exactly where I put myself in right now is that kind of cultural battle in Bitcoin between like the number go up camp and the kind of <laughs> the cypherpunks camp, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, and I'm leaning more towards like, hey, like, adoption at all we don't want adoption at all costs right we actually want like adoption but we want to maintain the monetary integrity of the network right we don't want to give up the freedom that we have um even if that means that the number will go up like we don't want it being embraced by governments but yeah you're not going to be able to do what you want to do with bitcoin you're going to have to go through a centralized kyc exchange or you you know you're going to have to use or you're going to have to register your miner or you're going to you know in that case like what is the point again what is the point so um yeah i just hope that they recognize that inviting the state into um these alternative systems that were supposed to be parallel and operate outside of the control of governments uh is a bad idea and so we'll see. Yeah, the, I think that the number go up greed. I mean, it got us as far as we've gotten. It's mm -hmm. it's it's literally what bootstrapped crypto. It's what allowed allowed it to explode. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like the like the big bang, right? I mean, it's 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 literally the the energy that that allowed it to expand so fastly was just this this greed. You know, people wanting to wanting to make money, and I, and I get that. But I do feel like it's it's now at the point where it's kind of eating itself alive a little bit, mm -hmm. and it's it's being used to to hurt Bitcoin. Do you think like the whole the, the digital gold meme? You know, mm -hmm. like that really didn't start till I don't know twenty fifteen, maybe twenty sixteen. I remember like Barry Silbert was like kind of the first mm -hmm. ones to really like push that narrative. Do you think that's kind of ultimately has has or will hurt Bitcoin or doesn't really have an effect? I mean, that, I feel like that's kind of like where the number goes up comes from, right? It's this idea that Bitcoin is digital gold. That is scarce from the scarcity right. component. That it's digital gold and that's what's like driving people to get it and just grab it. But then it's, it kind of ignores the digital cash use case, right? Yeah. It's like, well, it's digital gold, so don't even worry about digital cash. Yeah, I mean, that goes into all the uh, Bitcoin cash, uh, you know, versus Bitcoin feud that occurred mm -hmm. like in 2018 or 2017, whenever it did. Um, yeah, I think that you can't. Let me, let me ask the question. So do you think the digital gold thing was like invented as a, you know, because of big Bitcoins not being able to act as digital cash? So then it like became, well, it's digital gold. Or do you think... It organically just started to be used as digital gold. Yeah, the first the first thing I've ever I ever wrote about Bitcoin was comparing it to digital gold. So, and that was in 2012. So, I think it it is part of Bitcoin. 
right? It is um, the 21 million hard cap, like all of that kind of the way it, it kind of mimics gold, the mining, all of that stuff. So it's easy to make that parallel, um, you know, analogy. So I think it was always there. Um, but, you know, it's just you didn't have that being pushed as the main narrative. You also had it side by side with digital cash, like peer to peer electronic cash, because that's mm -hmm. what's on the white paper. Right. Exactly. So I think I think those two coexisted. And at one point, that digital gold narrative kind of took over um, because of the number go up. I think so. And I think to what you're saying, I think the number go up served its purpose. It served you know, it's like, it was valuable in a lot of ways, but now that we're heading into this kind of adversarial environment, uh, you know, I think that it would be wise for the Bitcoin space to kind of refocus their priorities because without like fungibility or without privacy or with, without all of these things, like it implies that Bitcoin is now controlled and with that same power that bitcoin is controlled to reduce privacy and fungibility they can also use that power to let's just say put pressure on the network to lift the hard cap or to you know so i think that privacy kind of needs to make a resurgence here and like kind of become more of the 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 dominant theme in in the bitcoin culture in order for it to like move forward and progress in a way that's meaningful um based on the original vision of peer to peer electronic cash and digital gold mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah no it totally makes sense yeah. it's ama amazing so you wrote that in 2012 you said like yeah kind of, so i uh, um it was a letter to my buddy and i was like hey man i just found this uh I just found out about this thing and I just, you know, some bullet points and everything about it. And so I sent him that. So I was able to go back and retrieve it. And it's kind of the first thing I ever wrote on it. And then I wrote one more thing on 2014. And then until now, probably, you know, haven't really written anything or published anything, but the message boards, like I'm on the subreddits and in, in, in Twitter, right? Like the Bitcoin subreddit and stuff like that. You can find me on there, but, um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't have considered myself like too much of an intellectual like I wasn't intellectual. I just had like a I don't know, just a curiosity about Bitcoin and I explored it here and there and stuff like that, but I didn't really put effort into going in depth. Probably not until like the Bitcoin standard. And like once I read the Bitcoin standard, I was like, "Oh wow, somebody really packaged this nice and neat." And like you start to understand the implications of a sound money standard and how that can change an individual. So I started noticing that with myself, like, oh, wow, like Bitcoin is making me think long term. Well, when you start thinking long term, you start making plans in order to achieve those plans. You kind of need to change certain you know, aspects of yourself or your behavior or your habits. It, it, it just starts changing. And so what are the implications of that happening to me, but happening more on a grand scale to the world? And you start thinking about how Bitcoin can change the world. Right. Mm -hmm. But and so it's it, and it's a really like it reorients society to operate on a foundation of principle instead of a foundation, <clears throat> instead of a foundation of fiat. Right. Um, and that, you know, those, those are real idealistic thoughts. And so I, I started really putting my, my focus more into Bitcoin and then Corona happened, whatever. And now I'm, I'm, I'm back at it, but it's been, um, but those, that idea of the future to me is what's, like driving me right now to be like, hey, we need to make sure that we get this right. Because if we don't get this right, that idea, that vision of the future, it, it, it's no longer there. Like that idea where Bitcoin changes the world for the better and reorient society to, to, you know, to embrace sound money and free markets. And from that goodness emerges, right? Like a natural order starts to, to, to come about instead of like this centralized dictated like mess that we have right now, where we have like men trying to become women and all types of stuff, you know, I think that's all just a product of fiat. So, but in order to bring about that world, we, we need to get Bitcoin right. In order to get Bitcoin right, we need to focus on privacy and fungibility. It's, it should be a main concern now because now we're entering territory where the state is using the transparency of the blockchain to actually go after people 
and put pressure on people. And now we got these big mining corporations, right? Like, of course, they're going to adhere to whatever regulations come about. So let's think about this. How does this affect the network? How does it affect the integrity? How does it affect, like, how does it affect all of that stuff? And so that's kind of where I've been, like, raising those those concerns. And, um, yeah, just thinking about it more. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. Well, so at what point? I know you said obviously, obviously now with the Ukrainian thing and the truckers, and you know it's it's like in our face. It's showing that you know. Bitcoin is arguably flawed in this way and it, it needs to be fixed and, you know, governments are taking advantage of, there's an attack surface there because of the transparent ledger, right? And they're taking advantage of that. Did you think about those things in the earlier days? I mean, what, when you were, you know, because the fact that you're able to kind of understand Bitcoin as digital gold so early, were you also then realizing the fungibility the lack of fungibility elements and how did you open? yeah so and this is kind of also another reason for me to be like all right what the hell is actually happening right now yeah. because i i of course it was it was always my hesitation with bitcoin always the fungibility yeah. and the privacy issue was always my hesitation with bitcoin and um you know it it, it was one of those things where i i came to realize hey this is the best shot we got so like you know let's just kind of like i don't see an alternative right like i think this is the best shot we got like even though all coins existed and stuff like that i just didn't see them as an alternative because it's not a shelling point i don't see it as a shelling point where everybody will actually come and congregate and like see the value proposition right i think a lot of people won't see the value proposition of monero because they're like oh the state is just going to make that illegal and i'm going to become a criminal like right away and so they'll dismiss it let's just say something like that right but with bitcoin i think everybody can actually see the value proposition in it somehow it, it provides value for everyone um so i was like this is our best shot at sound money let me just you know let me just put these worries aside and hope that they will that the network will naturally evolve to um you know just overcome these issues and i was told that like there was also always the prevailing narrative out there that yeah we'll figure it out like lightning is going to solve this problem or right. you know you know uh we're, we're adding this bip and it's gonna you know solve that problem and you know we're gonna get um taproot and that's gonna solve but as the networks evolve these issues are still there right like it's like whoa yeah. i thought we would be a lot further along like one of the first tweets from Hal Finney is like thinking of more ways to make Bitcoin anonymous, right? right, or, right. And like that was 2009. Now we're yeah. in 2022. So it's just like, now I'm like, all right, let me see whatever influence I got, whatever. So, you know, whatever, um, whatever I can do with my social media, let me see if I can raise this issue and get people to start talking about it and like emphasizing the importance of it because, where he, it was still like we're in 2022 and this thing we've been talking about it now for like 13 years it needs to happen at some point especially as we enter this like kind of black market phase that we're moving into where you know using bitcoin is going is going to be uh it, it's it's not going to be as easy for people as before right before like mm -hmm. the state didn't care enough but now when you transact with Bitcoin because of the transparency of the blockchain, it's gonna, there's going to be a lot more scrutiny involved, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like let's let's now reemphasize the importance of fungibility and privacy and all of that stuff, and let's talk about centralization as well and and all these attack vectors. And so, yeah, I mean, I didn't. It was one of those things where I was like, I had no no intention talking about this. I didn't ever think that I would be on a podcast uh, talking about this stuff, but uh, here I am. So, you know, to the extent that I can raise the conversation, make the noise, and, and and get people talking about it, I'm happy to do so. Yeah, you're you're definitely a very effective communicator, man. Um, you're especially with your tweeting. Yeah, I, uh, I tweet better well. than I talk, probably. No, you, you're doing great, <laughs> great at all ends. I didn't mean to criticize. No, I'm just saying, especially there though, like you're you have some good long threads that you put out um, summarizing a lot of things. 
Yeah, I'm, so, I'm pretty. I'm pretty like uh, tenacious with it too. Like I'm just like I, I, I'm just. I don't beat around the bush. I like yeah. to. I like to try to get to the heart of the matter. And if I f feel like there's something that's inconsistent, I just I poke and I poke and I poke until I can figure out what the hell like straight like to to get my head straight. It's more for me, mm -hmm. but I do. I'm I'm happy to do it out in the open because you know it lets other people kind of see the process as well and they can learn from it. And so I've gotten a lot of good feedback from it. So I'm 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 pretty happy to do it. Yeah, I mean that's why I started this show. You know, I was very much into Bitcoin. I was a BTC maxi, mm -hmm. and then I discovered Monero. I was concerned with Bitcoin's fungibility, much like yourself, kind of from the early, to, you know, from mm -hmm. from when I got into it, and when it became obvious to me, which is when I first started using it. You know, mm -hmm. and I was like, that's that's. I think a lot of people. That's the problem too. I think a lot of people don't even really use it. You know, especially, mm -hmm. you know, they, they have it, they bought it, you know, maybe it's on a centralized exchange or maybe they even take it off and they put it on their on their treasure or whatever, but they're not using it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, from the early days, I, you know, sending it to, to some people, sending it to some friends and and I'm, as I'm sending it to them, I'm like, I'm also kind of your conscience. I'm letting them know how much Bitcoin I have and giving mm -hmm. them access to see all the transactions I made, whether or not they know what they are. I'm like, that, that was just kind of an eye opener to me. Like when I give them 20 bucks, that doesn't happen. You know, yeah. it's the, you know, when I use my credit card somewhere, they, they don't then have a, are able to then go look at all my past banking history. Uh, so, you know, when Monero came around, uh, I was reluctant at first kind of for the same reason you Cause I was like, all right, well I'm focused on Bitcoin. You know, like, mm -hmm. but at some point I made the decision, like we, we need, we need privacy fungibility built in to the protocol layer. And I just didn't see that ever happening in Bitcoin. Um, I, and so far that's played out, you know, like I see there being attempts to, to make uh, Bitcoin usable, you know, like you said, lightning network coin joining, you know, using Samurai wallet. But I don't think you're ever going to get to the point where Bitcoin is is fungible on the on the protocol level or pri private on the protocol level by default. I don't I don't see that. I don't see how that's going to happen given how big Bitcoin already is mm -hmm. and now the politics, the geopolitics, the uh, you know, politics on all levels that's now involved with it. It's pretty much impossible to now turn Bitcoin into that. Yeah, I mean, that was a concern I always had. Like, hey, this the the you know, the protocol might ossify um at a point exactly. where like you can't go back right you got bitcoin got too big to actually go go back and kind of fix privacy and fungibility on a protocol level i don't know maybe like apparently so that and that's what i'm doing right now right i'm go, that's the question i'm asking and that's the uh that's where i'm putting my energy towards is trying to figure that question out hey is bitcoin going to become more fungible and private on the protocol level and if not how does privacy privacy and fungibility get fixed on the layers on top of it then you know um and that's the questions i'm asking now so i'm going through that process i don't have i don't have the answer um but it's it's been a fun process going through it i will eventually get to like the privacy tools i mean i use i use privacy tools like um but you know you you figure out a tool that works for you and you kind of like you you, you kind of stick with it and so i haven't like gone into the into the other wallets and so the one you know i used was wasabi right so for little transactions here and there whenever i needed to transact um you know I, I just load my wallet with some wasabi coins like coin join um and i just go about and i spend i spend yeah i just spend that money without without concern pretty much right um i'm sure they can tra track back you know, my spends to the Wasabi, um, the initial fund to the wallet from the Wasabi. But like, besides that, I'm not worried about them, like checking out my cold storage stash or anything like that. I feel like it got, you know, it's been severely, I mean, not severely, but um, sufficiently um, disconnected from that, you know, but yeah, it's just, you, you don't know for sure. Right. And yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of concerns that you need to have 
when you're transacting in Bitcoin, especially at the protocol level. Like there's a lot of things you need to be aware of. You need to have good coin um, um, UTXO. Yeah. 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 So UTXO. Just, that's a hard, the fact that that term exists, right? Like what, I got to have good coin. Like I don't need to have good cash management, you know, like yeah, yeah. I take cash out. I don't, I'm not picking and choosing which dollar bill I use. Yeah. You know? So I'm, I'm, like I said, I was hoping all of this stuff would have been worked out by now, but it's not. And so now I'm actually taking the dive to figure out if it will be. And then if it won't be, what are the steps that I need to do to like be private, right? Because yeah, like you yeah. said, and it's not because I'm doing illicit activities. It's just because, you know, you don't, you don't want anyone being able to trace back your coins and trying to figure out what you've done with your money and where you've shopped at and who, you know, you don't want that. So it's just it's just a natural like instinct to want privacy especially at a financial level and so um yeah i'm just gonna go through the process and figure that out um you know that's bringing a lot of people me asking these questions is bringing a lot of monero people to my threads <laughs> <laughs> <We're> like, <"Hey." laughs> yeah obviously um but uh well that, that's what I, I gotta push you there a little bit i know you don't want to talk like and and i totally no, respect fine. that but it's more so literally for my understanding right sure. and, and trying to understand the psychology of people and like so i hear you saying all these things and i, I agree with everything you're saying mm -hmm. um <laughs> so then what is the reluctance to monero is it just you know, why, why not then, you know, support something like Monero and try to push people into that? Like, what's your, your reasoning there? Is it just because like you said, as simple as you just don't want to take the focus off the Bitcoin project and it's like all hands on deck there. And we just, we set ourselves back yeah. by losing mind share to something like Monero. Is this, is That's that a it? good point. Yeah. I actually had that thought today. Cause I was like, man, all these people commenting all these Monero people commenting under my threads about Bitcoin's privacy issue. I was like, I wish that energy would have just gone into Bitcoin and like, you know, like a develop yeah. a, de a developer group, you know, formation around the idea of implementing more privacy and fungibility of Bitcoin instead of like going off into Monero. So that's one aspect of it. So I'm like, I don't want to get distracted or anything else. Um, another aspect I told you about, I just, I don't see Monero as a shelling point. Um, like on a global scale, right? I just, I don't see how- What do you mean world, by that? Like- the, How the world congregates and comes to accept Monero as like a base layer of money, as opposed to something like Bitcoin, where, you know, it, the transparent nature of the ledger allows for certain functionalities between like, you know, when you need it, you know, it would be great if it was like, hey, we can make this, private when we need to and we can make it public when we need to like that type of functionality would have been great for bitcoin and i think like um maybe i think uh zcash has that type of functionality but again i just think that those projects on the side i don't know if like those those altcoins i don't think they're gonna get the enough gravitation towards them to actually like become like a, a base layer money um and so I think Bitcoin has that right now. So why not put that attention and focus into Bitcoin? Um, the other thing is Monero. I don't know if it has enough liquidity to even, and maybe you can tell me this, right? Uh, to even sufficiently be considered private. Um, can, is it possible to de-anonymize de -anonymize the, like the ring signatures or whatnot? And like, you know, because the, and then, anonymity set oh man i have a hot trouble yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's easy to write, write like, every day and yeah it's just stuff these these things are yeah they're easy to write they're harder to say especially if you don't say them often but uh yeah because usually i'm talking to bitcoiners on like through <laughs> through text not through like actual voice um but yeah so is is there enough liquidity that the anonymity set is sufficient enough to keep you private that's a question that yeah ask. no that that that's a good question um well the monero community see monero community sees privacy as a like a constant battle right mm -hmm. so it's always trying to improve um but yeah currently sending monero right now i'd say yeah sure you're fine now mm -hmm. uh the, the liquidity thing comes in with yeah it's gonna you're, you probably can't easily you know 
take a billion US dollars, put it into Monero, and then, you know, get around sanctions, right? Because mm -hmm. you're, you're just going to blow up the entire entire market, right? You're going to go what? Go market by you like how, how do you even do it right you're not going to stay off the radar which is and this is uh what what the senator was talking about right mm -hmm. she was like well mm -hmm. what if you're doing a little bit and, um <laughs> but you know to her point yeah i don't think she did a horrible job i think she was asking the right questions honestly um and you know the liquidity will come in with time um just like yeah. you do with bitcoin you know uh, bitcoin wasn't always worth you know what it is today mm -hmm. uh it had it had those same issues so uh the liquidity argument i always see as one as just being a matter of time and adoption uh -huh. and then the question because the only reason why something like monero wouldn't achieve that is if you know there was just no use case for it and bitcoin just garnered all that adoption but what we're seeing in reality is Monero is growing in adoption for for the digital cash use case. You know, mm -hmm. in the dark markets, it's a, it's it's, it's, it's like used the for the dark markets, right? Yeah, it's the it's the king of 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 digital cash. I mean, if you there's a good good chart floating around where you can see the transaction count of mm -hmm. Monero versus other you know privacy coins like mm -hmm. Zcash and just dwarfs them. You know, so like anybody that actually is trying to anonymously send money without censorship or you know um you know whatever traceability they're going to use monero if they know it exists i mean that that's what we're seeing mm -hmm. um even ransomware the ransomware hackers i don't know if you heard like they offer 20 percent discount if the ransom is paid in monero really now yeah yeah now mm -hmm. there's the liquidity issue right you know if they're trying to get a ransom for you know, uh, five hundred million dollars. Then you know that's that's really arguably the only reason. And we we had a good show on this. So an expert in the field that actually deals with this, uh, a lawyer that that consults people when they're hacked, and uh, they they you know big companies turn turn to him, and uh, he was basically saying the only reason Bitcoin is really still used in for these purposes of ransomware is because of its yeah. liquidity. Yeah. So people are willing to put up with the traceability. For purposes of just being able to grab grab the funds, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then they offer a twenty percent discount with Monero in hopes that they send it. Uh, so my 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 point being, yeah, liquidity certainly not nearly as high as Bitcoin's, but I think that's just something that comes with time if Monero mm -hmm. continues to take you know win that use case of digital cash. And then in terms of anonymity, uh, you're basically referring to the ring signatures. Um, Currently, they're fine. Arguably, you know, there's there's a there's a um, a bounty out for anybody that can successfully trace Monero transactions put out by the U.S. government, and nobody wow. re retrieved that bounty. You know, yeah, that was put out by uh, how know, much? Department of Trade. Well, and oddly, oddly enough, a pretty small number, like six hundred thousand dollars or something like oh you know. i mean that's i think that's substantial i think that's good enough six hundred thousand yeah well you think for the u.s government you know you think they they throw some some decent money at it right like what's especially when they're printing like, trillions right yeah it's like yeah. you know a, a, a few tires and a few uh army vehicles <laughs> um so yeah so i mean uh to date it's proven to be untraceable and untrackable and then it's improving all the time. That's another, like I said, that's an, a major kind of component of Monero that's like built into the ethos, which is an, an argument that Bitcoiners then sometimes have against Bitcoin. I mean, against Monero, the fact that Monero isn't ossifying, mm -hmm. but is continuing to evolve. And you, you could argue either way. But I think if you want to get to the point where you have a, a protocol that's successfully adopted as digital cash, you're going to need to to continue to evolve to make sure it is digital cash before it ossifies. So can I ask you why Monero and not Zcash then? Is it because yeah, I mean, that's the other that's the other part about altcoins like there's then you get into like these other battles where it's like it, it splinters off the network effect of of the money and so you get into like these uh, sure. situations where it's like oh i don't accept monero but i'll accept your zcash and you're like oh, i don't have zcash so it's like you know but like everyone can congregate around bitcoin you know so um anyways but like just for the sake of this conversation i'm, I'm curious your take on why monero and not zcash 
Yeah, sure. So I guess the first reason is really kind of a Bitcoin maxi reason. Um, mm -hmm. because Monero hat essentially has won that, that niche. Like I said, if you look at the transaction count of Monero versus Zcash, it dwarfs it. So it has the network effect there. So I like it for that purpose. You mm -hmm. know, people, people are using it, Monero for this purpose and they're probably going to continue to use it. It's going to grow and it's just going to dwarf and there's going to really be no need to use Zcash unless it's doing something 10 X better than Monero. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then there's a bunch of other reasons as to why it literally didn't get that, you know, get that network effect and why Monero did, uh, mainly because Monero, uh, Zcash started with a trusted setup. Uh, so in, inherently, yeah, you know, I, I heard about it. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, we, we have this whole crypto thing, it's digital cash, but there might be a back door, you know, Let, let's say Although they did a good, they, they tried to do their best. And I, I don't know like if there was any updates to the last thing I, I read, but they tried to do their best to like uh, do the uh, signing ceremony or something like that yes, in, in yes. the most secure way possible. Yeah, well, trying to do their best really isn't good enough, right? Like, I mean, because theoretically, uh, there could have been some kind of collusion, right? Is it likely? Maybe, yeah, maybe not. But the fact that it's <laughs> theoretically possible the, the the people that were interested in this concept of, of anonymous digital cash said, you know what, I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to look at this other one, Monero, which has no trusted setup. You know, maybe it doesn't use the cool moon math that Zcash is using that makes it even more anonymous. Mm -hmm. But at least we can look at it for the same reasons people are like Bitcoin, not Monero, right? It's it's more uh, arguably it's 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 easier to kind of trust, right? Mm -hmm. uh, people can look at it. They can look at the math. They, they can look at the cryptography, and they can they can trust it. Uh, that's probably the primary reason. And then there's also the fact that it's it's run by a there's a there's the Z Corp, the, the corporation, mm -hmm. you know that that collects um, a percentage of the reward. It is a dev tax, you know, a dev tax that goes to a centralized entity that then a def essentially develops the coin. So it's like, all right, guys, I thought this is all about open source and preventing centralization and putting too much power into the hands of some entity that can then control the protocol. Yeah, then there was Zuko with, and I like Zuko. And I, you know. Um, yeah, he's he amazing, the guy. Basically shot his project in his foot when he's like, oh, we can like successfully like trace you know, back and like de-anonymize uh those people that we need to or something to something yeah. of that nature he's right? like, we, it will be fungible but uh not fungible to the point where we can't stop like criminals from doing that like, yeah. like, like what <laughs> i don't think he's yet to be able to kind of explain his way out of that uh, but yeah, all the respect in the world for the guy. I mean, he was like, he was, he was tweeting back and forth with Hal Finney, right? I mean, he was, he was one of the first guys to be, that was like, you know, experimenting with Bitcoin mm -hmm. and he, he saw the flaw in it and he set out to create uh, what he saw as being true digital cash. Mm -hmm. Why he did the things he then did, I don't really understand. And I, you know, that kind of gives me you know, apprehension there. Like, I don't, I don't really trust, I don't really trust the whole Z cash. Yeah. If you go back to my tweets. So, I mean, before I kind of you know, I became like a, I wouldn't say a Bitcoin maximalist, like more so I just kind of logically saw that Bitcoin, like we're going to trend towards one money and it's probably going to be bitcoin kind of thing like that now mm -hmm. i don't now i don't think that so much i think it's going to be more of a pareto distribution and it's going to be we're gonna have a multi-chain world and it's like obvious right like all of history like first of all all of history shows that right we've, we've always dealt with multiple monies before languages um, religions you yeah know? so and if you look at the way the space is evolving like there's only more coins being brought about now the idea that like Bitcoin Maxis put about it's like eventually they're all going to go to shit, right? I don't believe that. I think that we're, it's going to be like a Pareto distribution, 80 20. Like maybe Bitcoin will absorb 80% of the network of the world's uh, capital and then like the 20%. I don't know, you know, some degree, something like that. Um, damn, I forgot where I was going with this. But you're, uh, you're, you're, keep going because you're, yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. So, um, oh, I know where I was. So I, I, 
I had an interest in altcoins and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. I, and so you can go back in my Twitter feed and I'm there. And as soon as Zuko said that about like um, being able to track and trace criminals with Zcash, I was like, all right, dude, you just shot your project in the foot. Like, there's no, like, I'm done with it. I'm selling my, like, I'm selling my Zcash, whatever I had in my, in my uh, exchange account. And I was like completely done with that project because I mean, I don't know how you, and that's the other thing, right? You got like a founder involved and he's still involved with the project and kind of like almost have to trust that everything was set up correctly and that he's like relinquished the control. And anyways, I don't want to make this a Zcash discussion, but like, that's kind of where I, my thinking came along with, uh, or how my thinking evolved with Zcash. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Same thing. I mean, I made a conscious, dis- you know, I got interested in looking for, you know, fungible, fungible money. And I remember it was before Zcash even came out, you know, Zcash was like coming down the pipe and I was excited to see what it was going to be. Um, but my, my studies led, led me to Monero, which once again, is why, why I started this podcast, right? Because like, I was super interested in this. And I felt like the best way to really kind of go down the rabbit hole was to start something like this so I could talk to people, you know, I could talk to the developers of Monero, you know, directly be like, well, how about this? How about this? And if you look back at like, uh, you know, I've been doing this for years now, you know, and asking people all, all, all the questions that I have. And obviously as I, as I've gone along, I've become entrenched myself. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to uh, be del- self delusional here. I realize I hold bags, all, all of my, <laughs> all of my wealth, you have a bias. all of my wealth is in Monero 100%, yeah. you know, I'm not going to deny that. Um, but I'd like to say that uh, this show is on the hunt for true digital cash. Hmm. And thus far Monero is, you know, the winner, you know, it hasn't changed. If, if that changes, I don't know what I do, but you and, know, uh, you know, I appreciate that from the Monero community because that's what I'm like. That's one of the things I, I tweeted the other day where it's like, like I'm here for sound money and free markets. And to the, ex- <coughs> to the extent that Bitcoin facilitates that, like I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm all about Bitcoin, but like, I'm not going to lie to myself. Right. I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to delude myself because you know, I want the number to go up and I just want to become rich. Like I'm actually here for that purpose. And, um, and that's one thing I noticed with a lot of Bitcoiners is that they're willing to overlook a lot of that in order to like continue the, the dream of Bitcoin. Right. Like, and so, but it's glaring in your face, right? Like we just had the trucker protest. Like, you're not going to say anything about that. Like, um, obviously there's an issue, but the Monero community, I noticed, is a lot more principled in that stance. So I, I do appreciate that from you guys. I don't know enough about this in general. Like I said, I'm just going down the rabbit hole to have like, I feel like I could have a much more meaningful conversation about Bitcoin and Monero and the differences and why one and not the other, um, probably after this like rabbit hole journey. <laughs> but uh, right now I'm kind of like, you know, just focused on Bitcoin, going to figure that part out. And then, um, yeah, see, see where that leads me to. You should come to Monero. <laughs> I'm not coming. <laughs> no, you're not coming. <laughs> Take it on me, man. <laughs> oh, to, to what? Monero Topia, the, the conference. Oh, okay. I thought you saw, I thought you Are you going to be down in Miami, Miami for the Bitcoin? Yeah, conference? yeah, I will. I will. Dude, I see, come I see, come I by, see. Monero. Come on. <laughs> you can swing by. It's literally, I put it down the block. It's like, yeah, I mean, I it would, I probably have better conversations there, right? Like, because everybody... you will have uh, amazing conversation. We, I just, um, we just landed uh, Phil, Philip Zimmerman. You know, Philip Zimmerman? Uh, I heard of him, but I don't. He really He's the guy know. that invented uh, PGP, pretty gotcha, good privacy. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you heard that that whole story, and uh, I'm just excited because I was literally just talking to him on the phone today. And so he's gonna, well, he's gonna be the the only, I think, the only one of our speakers that's gonna be remote, but worth it for him because it's gonna be uh, that that should be cool. But yeah, you should definitely come by, man. Have some have some drinks, debate, talk to people. Sounds um, good. Yeah, and yeah, and I'll, very I'll, I'll be very open minded crowd, man. You'll 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 be surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, like I said, you, you talk, bro. The amount of hate I was getting for just asking these questions on Twitter from the Bitcoin community was ridiculous. I'm like, man, I'm just here trying to make Bitcoin better, like trying to figure out how to make Bitcoin better. Uh, and yeah, I got a lot of hate and slack uh, for that. So 
yeah, we'll see. I, I might end up there. <laughs> it's literally down the block. We could, you know, I'll, uh, I'll send you the, the deets. But okay. I, I, I understand, you know, I get Bitcoins, the whole the immune system, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I, I get that. And, you know, I, I myself am guilty of it in Monero itself, right? Like, because there's a lot of other competing privacy coin uh, mm -hmm. projects, right? There's like Pirate Chain, for example. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm sure I have people that, that are going to be watching this that are like kind of a little into Pirate Chain too. And like, but, you know, I, I keep them at, at arm's length, right? Because at some point it's not really helpful. Because like I said, what, what are they going to contribute? Like my argument with Monero versus Bitcoin is Monero is doing something that Bitcoin currently doesn't do and arguably does have this kind of 10x improvement gotcha. in some way or can work some it's you know in a symbiosis with it right bitcoin is the transparent ledger which will have uses and monero is the obfuscated one now to then have another one that's obfuscated in a different way using some different technology like what's the real benefit like what are you all you're doing is you're taking away users from another one and you're slowing down the growth and adoption of that one which is really important right because for these things to succeed you need adoption so i i myself act like a btc maxi some ways and i and i do understand the uh the immune system that in in a lot of ways there. though to to what you're saying in a lot of ways it is already operating in symbiosis right like people i don't know if they're doing atomic swaps or what but like people got to go from bitcoin to monero to operate yeah. On the dark mm -hmm. market so the way i see it is like you know if, if bitcoin doesn't allow you certain access or doesn't allow you access to certain markets right like uh there's going to be other other money that facilitates that access right like i i just or other ways to to actually you know get the goods that you need or the services that you need and that's there's just gonna gonna be a money for that that allows you to access that market if bitcoin doesn't facilitate that so i mean it just seems like there is going to be like this kind of symbiotic relationships between bitcoin and other currencies especially if they don't fix their privacy and fungibility aspects to it so mm -hmm. yeah i mean I, I get what you're saying how do you see and you know we, we, we could wrap it up after this but i just sure. kind of really curious to kind of see how you look at things like let's say you know monero um does succeed uh you know so now we have this this really this you know this true digital cash system or let's say whatever bitcoin evolves into digital cash and becomes more private how do you see that fundamentally affecting society and and the way things work i know often bitcoiners talk about you know the sound money aspects and how governments won't be able to print money anymore but i'm just talking about the digital cash aspects we're going to have this tool where anybody can send any amount of money to any other person without being stopped and with nobody being able to see or surveil it um like in your in your mind, I mean, do you just see that as 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 all good, as all upside, or do you see negative with it? I mean, is it is it is it a negative that some Russian oligarch can potentially use Monero, you know, 30, 30 years from now to easily uh, thwart a sanction? Like sanctions essentially don't exist in the future. Um, just curious how, how you view that. Yeah, so that's that. I, I, I look at it from the Milton Friedman um, perspective, right? Where I don't know that like there's that one minute clip of him where he's talking about, you know, mm -hmm. how there's going to be a, a digital e-cash that's going to allow you to send money from one person to another person without knowing who that person is going to be. And that means that, you know, criminals are going to have access to this, but in, you know, in general, it should make life better for everyone. So I take that approach. I think that, yeah, I mean, criminals use cars they use shoes they use tvs i mean they use technology right they use all the technologies that we have available to us um that has made our lives better and i think that's just going to be the same case with you know however this evolves right like digital currency that allows people to transact with one another anywhere around the world um and facilitates economic freedom criminals are going to use that but in general the net benefit is going to be you know, orders of magnitude better than what we have now. And it's going to allow for human flourishing on a way in a way that we've never seen before. I mean, 
maybe we've gotten glimpses of it, right? Like with Florence and uh, Venice, right? And like you see these like amazing civilizations being built around sound money. So I take that perspective. I think, you know, however, however it evolves, I think it's worth the pursuit. Like, yeah. and the, you know, the issue I do see evolving is like kind of what we have now where some people have access to the economy and can enrich themselves and at the expense of the masses right and that's basically what we have now so i would assume that like a free market money is going to be better than that right like it evens the the playing field like the oligarchs actually got to get rich from like either committing crimes or like providing value to the market right and so like if they're committing crimes well they're easy to identify and we can actually use police to go after them and stuff like that um as with you know with fiat as we see with just the corruption and all our governments and all of that stuff i mean they they use the apparatus of power to shield them so i don't think that would be possible with a free market sound money so um yeah I mean, that's basically my general idea off the top of my head of how things. No, are you did. <laughs> that that is you, you're you're right. I, I obviously agree with that one hundred and ten percent. We just need to get that idea. That's why I said with the running for Congress thing, like that. I haven't heard that conversation take place. You know, mm -hmm. I haven't heard that, and I haven't heard people be able to make eloquent arguments with regards to that. Um, you know, beyond you know the the us crowd, right? The mm -hmm. These the the the, the cypherpunk people and uh, yeah could couldn't agree more um, and and you know one of the reasons I ask is even you know Phil Zimmerman creator of PGP right I mean he he he's an older guy and uh, I'm sure you know he'll be asked this on the day of the conference but even just talking to him you know it's something he brought up to me he was he was concerned about digital cash working out because you know you won't be able to governments won't be able to sanction you know because he was talking about in terms of what's happening in russia right now and i'm just like i was that you know that kind of troubles me a little bit because like here, this guy's like one of the one of the founding fathers of all this you know you know he he created a technology that allows you to communicate essentially without censorship without anybody being able to, to see what you're saying to somebody else and using the power of encryption to do it and yet here he is now hedging and he's like, well, I don't know, I, you know, I don't know what the yeah. whole digital cash thing, you know, like, and that's like, I'm like, damn. The, the freedom mindset, I don't think too many people, I don't know what it is. I, I still, I have these discussions um, often enough where we try to figure out what it is that, you know, people just understand it and, and, and get it versus people that, you know, they're not, <laughs> they, you think they're on board, but when, when pressure, um, when you apply pressure it's revealed that hey they're not really like 100 percent on board like there's flaws to their uh they don't they're not principled and there's kind of flaws to their thinking exactly i don't know what it is do you have any idea um, is, there, is, it, is it genetic <laughs> is it <laughs> is it like life experience i don't know you know i think it's just i think it's short-sightedness i like to, i like to think that we're we're you know seeing the, the big picture you know sure, sure. um but you know, that's just giving us a pat on the back. You know, maybe maybe they're seeing things we're not seeing. It's complicated. Yeah, I guess you know people just see see the world differently. But I do I do think those that are really attuned to liberty and really concerned about any breaches of it are, you know, those those are those are the the people that are going to lead humanity in the right direction. I mean, I I summed it up in in my pin twitter like you know when, when we when we when we lose privacy and you know essentially when when you know when we lose the ability to communicate freely we essentially we lose our humanity we're no longer individuals you know when you when you really start to think about what what humanity will become if there's institutions that are able to control people control societies what happens is people are essentially are no longer people at that point, right? They're just, they're just controlled. And so like to, to not be concerned about that at the core level is essentially just not be concerned about humanity. Like you're willing to, to transition into being some other thing, right? That's no longer humanity. It robs you like, of your free will. 
Right. Rob's your free will. Will we still exist? Sure. But what, what are we at that point? We're some like new technology, some new form of a thing. A cog in a in a machine in a system yeah. that just is you know being directed. Right, the, a, the matrix, right? Yeah. You yeah. know, we're just and and I think some of us uh, really get that, you know. But this this is great, man. I uh, greatly appreciate you coming on. I'm glad I'm glad you did it, and uh, I look forward to talking to you again in the future if you ever wanted to jump on again after sure. you continue to explore. Yeah, um, I I appreciate it, Douglas. That was uh, I had a great conversation. Um, thank you for inviting me on and, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll do it again. Thank Cheers, you for joining us Cheers, on man. this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter and please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.